in today's video, this week's video, we are going to explore, is there actually real value added REITs? And where are the value in REITs after the huge, brutal, ferocious sell-off in Wall Street? How does that translate to finding value in REITs for yourself in today's platform? times last weekend, they mentioned that there is a thing called finding value in REITs, but really, ladies and gentlemen, over the years, how does one actually find real and good value in REITs that will sustain you through a prolonged downturn, particularly now that we're looking at interest rate increases, not only just for this year, next year, as well as possibly into 2024. Now, in today's video, essentially, we will also explore whether S REITs actually present the best value among all REITs around the world, be it compared to the US REITs, Australian REITs, Japanese REITs, as well as the new and upcoming markets, the C REITs, the Indian REITs, as well as the Philippines REITs. So do stay on and uh, subscribe and like our uh, YouTube video because we come on every week to give you the most contemporaneous update on the hot topics in real estate investment trust, not only just in Singapore, but around the world. So ladies and gentlemen, are REITs at good value now after the current sell-off, right? So essentially, ladies and gentlemen, you can see that we need to find a stability in terms of basically the 10 year bond year swing, you know, in terms of uh, before we actually find some stability in the market. Now, what essentially happened, ladies and gentlemen, if you look at essentially the last 10 year bond yield, you know, uh, what you are actually having is this you know, the REIT market index in Singapore actually fell down to 801, it came down from as high as 853. I mean, how does the REIT market actually? have been faring in this current market correct. And you notice, ladies and gentlemen, this particular chart shows that the read market correction only started just about two months ago, falling from 853 down to currently at 807. Since the beginning of the year, you can see this gentlemen over here, the S&P has been correcting. You know, so from a high that we saw on 3rd of January, right now in the last two weeks alone, you know, um, other than intraday low that was post, uh, that was posted uh, in one of the trading days, you notice that the S&P now is on the verge of doing a 20% correction. As you know, ladies and gentlemen, the market thermit that if you actually go into a 20% correction, you are entering bear market. Now, the horrendous, horrendous fear now is, of course, if you go into a bear market, which is defined as a 20% correction of the S&P or Wall Street or NASDAQ, down 20% from its recent high, as you can see for the S&P is down from the high that you saw on 3rd of January, then you will actually have uh, the, the, the case where if you go into a bear market recession, does it automatically mean that the recession will follow? Now, essentially, since 1948 up to now, we have had 12 bear markets. But really, you know, does REITs do outperform in a bear market? That is basically where we are going to find out in this video. And you notice that it's where we are going to search for value in our real estate investment trust holdings. Because if you have and are holding real estate investment trust value, while the capital returns may be less than ex expected in this uh, downdraft, you'll notice that you still get consistently consistent dividend yield, whether it's three months or a six months basis. Now that actually gives you tremendous leverage because one of the other components of real estate investment trust that is that it gives you the ability to reinvest your proceeds at a lower entry price, you know? So especially you, when a market basically hold down the prices, uh, or rather a bear market hold down the prices of real estate investment trust. So really ladies and gentlemen, this is where the opportunity is. Now this is something that we at GCP Global get very excited about, which we always love to share with you on our YouTube video, as well as basically our GCP Global classes. So where are we now? Yes, you look at the S&P now, it's now almost 20%. It's, you know, I mean, rather than fretting about basically whether it's going to go into a bear market session, ladies and gentlemen, 
and therefore, meaning that the recession actually holds, you know, it's all basically very frightening. You know, what does it really mean? You know, if you know how to find great value in your real estate investment trust, and will this real estate investment trust get you through this particular downturn? Okay, this is in today's video that we are going to focus. And once again, if you like it, do subscribe and smash the like and subscribe button so that you'll be posted and on the latest notification in regards to our weekly video and our retirement. You know, the Straits Times article also pointed out that, hey, you can see, right? I mean, the FTSE SD index 10-year return is 142%. But really, is that true? And how and to what extent, you know, does this one single number represent Good. Now, what we can do for you, ladies and gentlemen, is at GCP Global, we know that we are very thorough. So what we'll do now is to go through all the 30 reads that were present and available and trading during the last upcycle, which actually saw the interest rates move up from uh, December of 2015, right up to the December of 2018. That is actually over a period of 12 uh three years now here you can see ladies and gentlemen the third call of the uh, third of uh, the uh, september end of september 2015 before the interest rate starts to move up the second column represents the prices at the end of the interest rate cycle and you can see that the third column actually represents the price change and the fourth column represents the percentage changes you can see ladies and gentlemen as you go through the list from capital more trust right down to fraser or and uh uh, Star New Global. This particular table shows that out of 15 reads, three suffered losses, you know, at the end of the three year interest rate cycle. Not too bad. What about the next one? The next one is really a more a greater reflection of how REITs actually perform. You can see, ladies and gentlemen, that in this uh, next fifth, this table where we have 15 REITs, you can see that actually only uh, three of them actually posted positive returns. The rest of them, 12 out of 15, actually posted, uh, or rather 11 out of 14, 15, you know, posted actually losses. So you can see, ladies and gentlemen, if you combine this table with the previous table, you will notice that you have 14 out of 30 weeks that uh, survived the uh, interest rate cycle, the up cycle the last time around over a three year period, they actually suffer losses. So how does this numbers actually tally up with what the straight time have actually mentioned? 142% return. Man, 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 you notice that this median, this return is basically too far away from the truth. Because essentially what really happens is that for the shrewd and smart and perspicuous uh, REIT investors, you notice that, for example, look at this table, you've invested in, say, Maple Tree Industrial Trust, which is basically went up from 1.485 to 1.91, or a gain of 28%, you notice for a million dollars invested over the three years, when interest rates actually went up nine times to 2.5%, you actually get a return of 8%, meaning that you know a million dollars make you about 20, 290,000, not even including the dividends to be received during that period. So it actually debunk the myth that even in interest rate up cycle, you should still be investing. But only the good ones. And this is what a GCP Global in you know, our investment classes we ferret out this for you. Um, but then again, if you have the unfortunate of investing in say like Sabana, you know, which is a stock that we have actually avoided through the last uh, uh, decade, you know, since it's listing, you notice that essentially uh, you would have suffered a loss of 49%, meaning that a million dollars invested in Sabana at the end of the interest rates up cycle in December 2018, you basically will be suffering a 490,000 loss. So even if you have three years of dividend that you get, you know, Savannah from 2016, 2017, 2018, it's definitely not sufficient to cover the 49% return. So you can see, ladies and gentlemen, that these two tables actually set up very clearly that the fortunes of good REITs, you know, are multivariate during an interest rate up cycle. You as a REIT investor, for you to be making money, you know, this is uh, what you should be focusing on is 
when the tenure bond yield falls, the base, you can see that the tenure bond yield, you know, clusters of stress, you know, since last year, because of the rapidity in which it went up, it's time to be cautious. And we were right, this correction came, you know, and we are spot on. But right now, what do we, uh, how and to what extent, what are the signals that we look out before the tenure for base on right reads, you know, where it's offering value, especially it's being hammered now because of the overarching fear of interest rates upcycle. This is your best time. This is your buying option. This is your good time to be positioned because even in good reads, as well, you have seen, you can still make money on the capital return, not even including the, the steady dividend yield that you'll be getting on a year-to-year basis, even when interest rates upcycle. So yes, the Straits and article, uh, the 142% return, you know, is a little bit not mirroring the whole effect, but when we study the whole 30 reads as you have presented in the 30 uh, reads uh, table, you notice that essentially the fortunes of reads are multivariate. And the bad reads will give you the returns. The good reads are the ones that give you a steady return, even in this uh, interest rate. So where to find them in the detail? Of course, you know, we will go through with you in special. And once again, till next week, we will be exploring other issues on real estate investment trust. Cheers and have a good weekend.